So before handing it over to our conference speakers today, I'm going to present, uh, introduce them briefly. Nathalie, first of all, that I have known for many years now. She is the guidance counselor uh, for since August uh, 2019, when I left the Réseau Reptic, the Reptic Network. She has uh, been a guidance counselor for more than 10 years now, in addition to have taught uh, uh, art, art history in college for five years. Mario, Mario Guilbeault, he is uh, a uh, head of project at Fédération de Cégep. He is part of uh, the uh, Reptic Network since 2003. He is a master's degree holder in science of education and DSS in technology of education. He started his career in college as a philosophy teacher in 2018 and as a guidance counselor and a technological counselor as well. So have a great webinar, everybody. And I will now hand it over to Nathalie and Marco. Thank you, Nicole. It's uh, always uh, an honor and a pleasure and uh, a bit bewildering at the same time to have been introduced in such a great way, formal way. But uh, the... Uh, formula is uh, something we're all used to. So let's do that. I've known Nicole for a long time. So it's a bit strange to me uh, to hear her speak so formally about me. But okay, let's begin. So what I want to do today is to introduce the Reptic Network and the 20 years of practice and uh, sharing uh, re resources, uh, digital resources for pedagogy. So uh, in uh, the uh, stream of resources published, shared, if we come into the college uh, network later on. We don't know what's happened five years ago. And so it's a bit of a recap and uh, an overview because it's our 20th anniversary. And when it's our anniversary, sometimes we uh, like to go over uh, what we've done and where we are. So let's start with the foundations. What is Reptic Network? It's a practice community that uh, brings together the Sipetic. So we call them Sipetic, but today we also call them uh, digital, technological, pedagogical guidance counselors, whatever you want to call them, uh, that uh, there isn't any formal name, but it's a, a more of a, a loose definition. But we see it by their tasks. They do the same kind of tasks, even though there's a bit of variation. They're responsible for integrating uh, digital technologies and pedagogy in the education system of Quebec. It's one of the six practices of uh, community of practice in the Fédération de Cégep, and their functioning is based on the work of Etienne and Beverly Wenger Trainer. It's a way of saying that our way of working, our process is pretty uniform and is based on research. So you see at the bottom of my screen, the communities of practice of the FEDE. So the Reptic, there are others as well. And I the, will then challenge you, do you know the representatives of your establishment? Reptic, Repstat, Repca, Repfra, Repso, and the uh, librarian that is member of Ribic, which is the uh, group of libraries or librarians. So all these people in your educational institution have uh, their correlate the Fédération de Cégep, which are colleagues, Marco and I, as uh, the uh, presidents or the uh, hosts of the practice community. So a bit of a history of the Reptic Network that started in 2002 and that was officialized in 2004 up till today. Uh, in 2024. So what you see here on the left is a little pearl that we found in the documents. Isabelle Laplante, which is the librarian of the Centre de Documentation Collégiale, and uh, doing her work, she found a video, a VHS, of the first meeting of uh, the Direction de l'Enseignement Collégial, the Minister of Sepetic meeting, or the uh, guidance council meetings where we had uh, discussions between these people because technology is advancing very quickly. The progress goes very fast and people should not be in silos. So already in 2002, and it's not 2022, it's not, sorry, it's 2002, the, uh, the uh, directorship of uh, post-college uh, education uh, was thinking that already. And so we I couldn't imagine that 20 years later there would be something like AI that uh, would uh, uh, create a lot of opportunities for progress uh, in an exponential manner and sometimes very surprising. So in 2004 and in 2019, we could say, uh, the Reptic Network is launched. This is when they develop a lot of resources. 
among which I will uh, present some today. There's periodical meetings, there's production of resources, Repsik meets periodically, there are large annual meetings, and they put in place processes for collaboration. I like to say it's also uh, the time when Nicole Perrault was the president of Repsik, and it was the time when we put in place the foundations of collaboration between institutional institutions and establishments. So when we get into Reptik, or when we get into the network, each Reptik and each college becomes our colleague in a way. So it's building of community. It's um, to think that each Reptik can help another Reptik in another college and uh, the relationships are built in that way. So in our last service agreement with the minister, because uh, the Department of Education, because we're funded by them and not by the Fédération du Cégep, for example. So we uh, justify our funding in that way. Um, what we've done in the last five years, we've done a lot of things. For example, uh, I uh, came into my role in 2019 and six months later, there was the pandemic. And during the pandemic, we offered a lot of support to our members who were the firemen, if you will, the front line of the pandemic. They helped the teachers to adapt their classes and doing distance training and boot camp, if you will. And so we brought everybody together on Friday noon for meetings that we called the uh, uh, weekly Reptic meeting just to be together, take a break, discuss, and see how we can all support each other to uh, help uh, the Reptics and the thousands of teachers and the tens of thousands of classes that has to uh, that have to be uh, remote classes now. So we have done that. We've also formalized some of our practices. Uh, of course, it's not the subject of the webinar today. So let us carry on. Uh, what's interesting for us today is mainly the resources of the Reptic network. The resources, their particularity is they are developed by and for the college uh, uh, network, if you will. So you, we can adapt them for high school or university, of course, or international uh, uh, institutions, but they are first and foremost developed for the college, the CEGEP level with the structure of the classes and their programs and the profile of the students in the CEGEP or college network for the teachers as well. So, and it also applies to many professional situations for the uh, teachers and teaching personnel. It's a bit of the structure that we're going to give you today. We're going to start with professional situations because it's probably what is interesting for uh, most of you. So let's take a professional situation. For example, let's say we are actualizing or uh, remaking uh, or changing a program and you want to uh, uh, f work on the disparity of the uh, digital skills of the students before and after the program. So it's the profile of the of the college students. So the uh, the TIC profile for the college students, it was developed by and for the colleges, and it is based on skills that are very technical to master, pretty high level of mastery on certain digital abilities for searching for information, uh, uh, processing information, presenting information, research and collaboration. Uh, and uh, ad, uh, acting as a responsible, uh, ethical, digital citizen um, in, in an effective way, of course. So the TIC profile is a frame of reference that uh, has some very concrete targets. You will see in the link that I will put in the chat, you will see if you um, have already read other frames of reference, for example, the digital uh, skills uh, uh, reference. It's important because it's a high level view of things and it's an umbrella of all the different digital skills and the different uh, uh, groups, teachers, uh, digital citizens, uh, students. Whereas here we're talking about a more of an operational view of it, we are uh, really talking about college students, not teachers in preschool, for example. We're only talking about students only at the college level. So it's pretty specific and it allows, uh, for example, with the uh, uh, 
uh, capsules that we've developed, we can help the students develop these capacities. If you're interested by the TIC profile, uh, there are different video capsules and 300 different uh, articles uh, and resources on Eductiv. It's the portal. It's the uh, portal that hosts all the profil uh, TIC resources. Uh, so it's also a portal where there are uh, uh, practice plans, plans of practice that are related to the TIC profile, but related to that, there's also video clips co-produced by the CC DMD, and it's uh, didactic material to present abilities and present the, the uh, digital abilities or skills to the students, or the uh, if we are a uh, guidance counselor, if we uh, pre uh, present these to a uh, community uh, around the program, you can use these resources. It's what you see on the bottom right. So. There we go. So um, let's carry on. So I will hand it over to Marco to talk about another resource. Uh, yes, uh, we uh, saw the update of our program. I hope you're not going through that. It's uh, quite difficult. And uh, we have only been working on that for the past three years to update our program. So these people have to learn. They have to learn in our classroom. They have to develop these uh, digital skills from the TIC profile. And one of the ways we do that is to integrate digital uh, skills, digital activities in uh, our uh, classroom time. So to do that and to do it in an effective, efficient way, in a rigorous manner, we can use the uh, CAP uh, guide that was uh, really designed to accompany in an autonomous way a teacher who wants to begin if they're self-motivated. But I uh, advise you to go see your Reptic counselor if you uh, think of an activity that is related to digital skills, and he can give you a lot of uh, uh, good uh, uh, advice. And it's a good uh, foundation, the CAP guide, four sections. And the first one is, why do I do this? And we are very realistic. The reasons can be diverse because I think it's fun and I think my students will enjoy it. Or it could be uh, more specific. I want them to collaborate more efficiently using digital tools. I want to allow remote uh, collaboration and working together and sending videos and exchanging things. Uh, so independently of the reason, it'll be important to specify that. And the guide will allow us to ask the right questions and follow the right process to specify what we want to do and then we have to uh, uh, have objectives if we just want to do something we don't really without objectives we don't need a guide so what the guide does is it helps us to formulate objectives that will be quantifiable that we can evaluate so to determine what i want to uh, accomplish and how i will measure the results planning the activity and holding the activity and evaluating the results did we get the results we wanted and are we doing things in a rigorous way so the cap guide is separated into these four sections. Very interesting in helping us to uh, ask the right questions uh, and have the right framework uh, to look at uh, uh, the pedagogical side of digital uh, tools or digital per, uh, capacities that we want to build in the classroom. So the CAP guide was updated uh, last year. So in the last school year, 2024 uh, uh, still, but just to uh, dr drill down a little bit to uh, give us a theoretical framework to make sure that we have the right uh, uh, process and to be able to evaluate the activities in a rigorous way. And there's a, a, a form for self-evaluation that was added. I'd like to uh, uh, thank Marie-José Trontreau and Joanny from ABTV Timiskaming and Joanny from Shawinigan that have uh, helped us to create uh, this uh, self-evaluation table with the different parts uh, that you see on the screen there. So it's a quick tool to use to uh, cover the different parts of the CAP guide. And as Nathalie said, it's a collaboration uh, that is uh, quite uh, large. Uh, there's uh, people uh, collaborating together from different regions and put together their expertise and worked uh, together on this. So all these guides, all these resources, there may be somebody in your CEGEP who worked on them, uh, most uh, probably at one time or another, and you probably don't know. So next slide. 
we explored the activities, all of that. Let's uh, say that I have a little bit of a funky planning, something really creative, and I want my students to be certified that they have badges before getting to other modules. I want them to accomplish certain activities, formative activities to reach certain skills, to go to the next level. So these preliminary uh, objectives. So a way to do that is to explore the digital badges, badges numeric in French. So digital badges, which is a booklet uh, of discovery to really draw a portrait. What are digital badges? How do they work? What they do? So we can change slides now. Okay, so this gives us a portrait. Uh, we What can we do with digital badges? Micro certification to go to the next module but it can also be digital badges that are quite large, like AcuPC, wide ranging, like AcuPC gives, if you say you take certain training with AcuPC, they give you a digital badge, you can put it on your LinkedIn profile. It's another usage for digital badges. It gives us a bit of a history and the, the tools to create uh, these badges. So it gives you a good idea. If you're interested in this kind of thing, you can uh, also give uh, students more motivation, extrans ex external motivation and t uh, students that are a bit of more gamers, they like trophies and that's kind of a, a motivation. So if this is something interesting for you or for certification reasons before going to the next module, digital badges can be useful for that. And uh, it uh, works really well with Moodle. If you uh, want to use that, uh, it's a great uh, open for source platform. It's called Moodle. I recommend it. So after that, uh, I will now hand it over to Natalie, uh, who will cover the next part. Yes, it's my turn. So uh, you uh, have done micro certification, for example, for uh, formative evaluation, and uh, you, the end of the trimester comes, the semester comes, and you say, well, things happen, things uh, happen with my evaluations. I want to look at the evaluation strategy that I'm using. I'd like to use digital tools in my evaluation, or I want to consider the fact that we live in a digital world and uh, to adapt my evaluations uh, to that and to uh, review how I do things. Because I see that with AI and gener uh, generative AI and large language models, but maybe the tasks that I'm asking of the students don't allow me to completely uh, verify if it's the student or the AI that was trained to do this task. So it could be an example. Uh, so if you plan your evaluations, uh, we have a guide uh, to uh, evaluate uh, digital learning. So you have access to the guide called the GEA. It's a giant. Yes, it's pretty big. Uh, wide ranging, the géant uh, and the realization of the Reptic uh, is something Reptic built with Julien Leroux, which is a retired teacher at Université de Sherbrooke. So she is the author of the guide and in collaboration with Reptic, who uh, have adapted the language, the university language that they translated into a more uh, everyday language to be more accessible to uh, 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 guidance counselors and teachers. And they give specific examples of each of the steps of the process for evaluation of digital learning, digital tools. So how do we analyze, plan, uh, design, judge, validate? Uh, and, um, and when we're a teacher, we do this automatically it's second nature but we do it ourselves but now if we follow this process we will do it in a more systematic way but it's intuitive when you're a teacher anyway so the guide also contains other sections uh, of course there are reference frameworks based on research so if you follow the Jean guide you are following a process that is solid that is based on research that it's not just based on perception or uh, subjective uh, knowledge. So the it's based on research. So the evaluation process, the one I described, which is really at the heart of the Géant Guide. So there are models of integration as well for digital tools. There are uh, 
information uh, uh, forms to fill out. They can be found throughout the pages of the process. So if you're in the process of analyzing, you have, for example, a checklist to uh, uh, download that can guide your thinking that will allow you to uh, ask the right questions related to uh, planning digital learning. So uh, this was often the issue. When we want to adapt a, a tool for evaluation that we have, or if you start a new class or a new program with uh, implementing these new programs, we want to ask the right questions. And uh, the... Um, these checklists or forms can help guide you to ask the right questions so that you can think of the answers and not get lost in the, uh, the forest, if you will, and ask the right questions to get to the right answers and have the right kind of dialogue to build uh, the best evaluation framework possible. So there's also relevant examples for the college level, some examples that were taken, created by Repsic, people who work uh, with teachers every day. So we uh, are talking about a guide here that applies to uh, CEGEP college only. Uh, it's very specific to that. So that's the Jean guide. And uh, next slide. Okay. And uh, now I'll hand it over to Marco. Uh, yes, we have uh, thought about these evaluations. We've done uh, these evaluations. We put them together, and I'm surprised there's some plagiarism, and there's a committee for uh, uh, plagiarism because the students can contest, can appeal, can ask for explanation. They have rights. So we uh, go into a committee for that. It happens sometimes. Uh, I uh, was uh, myself on this kind of a committee to review plagiarism and uh, intellectual integrity. So, so often the students didn't understand what plagiarism is completely and didn't uh, get a good explanation, or they had strategies in class that uh, didn't uh, take into account the risks or try to reduce plagiarism or actually increased the risks of plagiarism. So independently of the reason, um, it's an issue. It's a serious issue. It's uh, more and more present with AI. Uh, that uh, uh, is there, or like it or not. So that's why we've revised uh, the guide uh, in collaboration uh, with the librarians. So we really uh, worked together to uh, have an idea and all the different elements and tools around AI in regards to intellectual integrity and plagiarism. So we're really working in collegiality. We're working together to share tools, to redesign, to change the tools as needed for your CEGEP. So, so we did uh, a, a guide, we compiled resources. And so it's a guide of resources that you can use and adapt to your CEGEP. So it's an update of a guide that was published initially in 2020. And this guide uh, was uh, massively adapted, used, uh, redesigned, republished in different CEGEPs for different uh, uses. CEGEPs like Joliet, who did a, a website based on this guide for the students. There were plenty of ways it was used in the CEGEPs. In 2024, we saw that each of the CEGEPs uh, pushed this further. They took this and ran with it. And these... Uh, was mainly made for university, but they uh, uh, appropriated it and changed it for their own uses. And they created uh, resources that are really relevant around plagiarism, and intellectual integrity. And in 2024, we integrated this guide, uh, in, this into our guide to uh, share it more widely and, uh, and working on the different licenses and uh, the different formats that we could share. And so it's really a great resource to uh, use. That's why it's in the PowerPoint. People often ask the question, yeah, PowerPoint, I would have liked to have a doc file. Yes, but the use case of this kind of resource is to adapt it to your needs, to uh, do a training in class uh, or have it in the library to people, for people can be uh, consulting it. So we wanted it to be... Uh, something that is easy to use and modify to different needs. That's why we have it in PowerPoint. Uh, that said, there's uh, a uh, 
compendium of knowledge there's a, a based on research and it's a way to uh, educate ourselves around plagiarism and intellectual integrity before training others so that's uh, the spirit behind the guide and uh, uh, around intellectual uh, uh, integrity and uh, four years of work, uh, uh, often in the shadows and using these resources and uh, reworking them and sharing them across uh, the uh, CEGEP network. Thank you, Marco. And uh, we look at another situation. We talked about uh, uh, educational planning, pedagogical planning and intellectual integrity. We talked about evaluations, certifications of uh, macro planning of uh, uh, programs of study, but sometimes we're blocked, we're stuck on a very specific issue or problem. I want to use the workshop module in Moodle to plan a pedagogical activity. Uh, it's very specific. Yes, you can find some support uh, with a tutorial on YouTube, but uh, probably the Reptic is the best resource to support you individually. And uh, whether it be for any uh, thing related to educational technology. And so your Reptic can support you individually. And if your Reptic doesn't have the answer, what's great is that there are 125 members who can answer your question. I like to say that when you have a question with the educational technology because of the Reptic network, there's two people away uh, from having the answer. So that's very relevant and very precious because you always know somebody who knows somebody who has the answer. So technology advances very quickly that it's impossible to be on top of everything. It was impossible for one person to know everything in 2024 when we created the Reptic Network and it's even less possible today. So if you have a question, there's 125 people in Reptic around Quebec who can answer your question. We share uh, information, questions, knowledge together on a Teams meeting that is very active on a daily basis. It's a Teams group. We can share resources, ask questions. I'm in Reptic. I created this guide for my teachers. You can use it if it's uh, uh, good for you, and you can use it and share it with others. So we co-design uh, and co-support each other. Uh, as uh, teachers and guidance counselors. So if you don't have a, an answer to your question, there's one of the 125 members who can surely help you. Reptic is also who we call when uh, HR has uh, a training for all the colleges. For example, uh, um, the training on sexual violence. For example, if you are in the college network, the SAGEP network, you know that uh, we have to take this training to prevent and fight uh, uh, sexual violence. And these trainings are given online. Often it's Reptic that will help uh, HR to do that. So when the DTE has to train everybody for a new software or the, the IT department or new measures for cybersecurity, IT often uh, works with Reptic because Reptic uh, knows the most about the teaching profession and how to connect with uh, teachers. Reptic is also who you call when other services need help with uh, educational technology and Reptic organizes training where the, techno the communication department can look at something related to technology. And so Reptic uh, serves all these roles in addition to supporting teachers. A few words on the future of the resources of the Reptic Network, a lot of things ongoing, the uh, digital toolbox. And so for many years now, we've been working at mapping the digital tools. For example, what is uh, possible for surveys? What do we have for mental mapping? What tools do we have for different things? And we will establish or uh, put together a list of the best tools if you want to do this or that. What are the, the tools uh, that you can use for different uses? So other things we're doing, uh, uh, pedagogical accompaniment in teachers and using generative AI. We have a working group uh, 
that uh, is examining that. Another working group that uh, is looking at uh, institutional uh, framework for uh, AI and uh, governance and uh, a, a synthesis uh, of uh, using uh, um, of using uh, uh, audio uh, audio content or uh, discipline uh, uh, based. Uh, podcasts the teachers use cost uh, podcasts or students also can use uh, podcasts so it's about the use of podcasts uh, in uh, teaching and uh, personal uh, professional development also uh, the digital uh, creative spaces fab lab media lab makerspace there's uh, a uh, workshop on that they all have specific terminology and you probably have that in your CEGEP as well so that's what we're working on and much much more on the back burner as well so from our end, your Reptic is there for you and the uh, Réseau Reptic is there for your Reptic. So our members are the 125 Reptic. We generally don't answer the teachers directly, but we know that behind each of our members are all of you. And so we're very happy to support the Reptic members who will then support you in your day-to-day -day work. And we thank you for your time and your participation and your attention today. And we are available to answer your questions. We feel that you uh, were not very active in the chat to ask questions, but there's a Q&A period and we are available to answer all your questions. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now to allow uh, for a Q&A time. Thank you, Nathalie. Thank you, Marco, for this presentation. Very interesting and enriching. We see that the resources are up in the chat uh, for digital uh, tools and supporting uh, teachers at the CEGEP level. Uh, they're very interesting. I know there was a project at the time when I uh, was uh, there. Uh, you talked about uh, uh, digital badges for recognizing uh, capacities or training or acquired skills was that put aside or do you still use that i, I can answer that uh when um the project was a pilot project where we uh did an overview of the pilot project there was five colleges CEGEPs, that participated at the time uh, to different degrees so some were very uh much uh, uh, into the process and others less. So the one that was the most advanced in the process of the Cégep de Lévis, uh, where they would certify, and they still do certify many skills with digital badges and the sick uh, profile, but also student engagement and that kind of thing. So they continue along that path, but the pilot project, it was a question of uh, orientation on, uh, it required a lot of resources to for not a lot of buy-in from the CEGEPs, the colleges. So yes, the Réseau Reptic is serving its members, but because it's also in the Fédération des CEGEPs, we have to uh, be on the same page with the orientations of the IT and the programs of study and the digital tools. So they orient uh, our uh, vision. They give us certain priorities and uh, uh, over other priorities, for example. So. Uh, it's like in 2018, uh, the uh, digital action plan for sphere education with the first objective being establishing a, a frame of reference for digital tools and skills, but the colleges were a bit uh, hesitant to invest to certify with the digital badges with the tick profile because we didn't know if that was mandatory to the frame of reference or not. And so now with the evolution of, and we see that the colleges that want to have a system of digital badges can come and consult with us and we refer them to experts. So as a uh, responsible for the TIC network and the communication between all these people, how do you perceive the, how in, general do you have an impression that since the pandemic or the last uh, few years or the introduction of ai and chat gpt how do you perceive the attitude of the teachers uh, uh, with uh, with regards to digital tools do you want to go ahead marco yes i can take that 
yes uh, well uh we saw a big change we had two classes of people people who really liked that and people who don't want to hear about ai at all so with the arrival of the pandemic there was a, a kind of a mandatory aspect and that's what happened with ai we can ignore ai in class but the students will use it anyway or part of our students will use it anyway so it's uh, become uh, central to education and the vision that we saw at the time the dichotomy is uh, really less now so now you have to pay attention to ai it's part of the reality and in the beginning, oh, well, personal computers and the internet at the beginning, like with Wikipedia, everybody said, well, well Wikipedia helps be, so it, it, it be, became part of the landscape and uh, digital tools and AI as part of the landscape today and uh, something you can't get around. And sometimes uh, there's some uh, ethical questions around it. We said yes, no, sometimes in certain cases, maybe not in others. That's where the Reptic Network and the Reptic and the Sejeps can really bring value because they have the expertise, they have the depth of knowledge necessary to uh, look at these complex questions, these ethical issues that take time to uh, explore and think about. So we uh, are 125 people who think about this. And a teacher asked me this. I have a doubt. What do you guys think? So we can ask all the 20, 125 members and think about it together and really look at it in depth. So we have the resources to do that where we have 125 people who will take the time to think about things. And so we have a lot of webinars and trainings, but nothing really beats uh, uh, 125 people sit down together and think about something. Sometimes uh, it takes a whole year of asking questions and to go into depth and drill down and then be able to uh, have a common answer and drill down on it. So uh, that's uh, there's a transformative process. It's not just how do I use Word or how do I uh, help my students to learn about Word or uh, to do, uh, uh, what does it mean with AI? What does AI mean for learning French? What does it involve for evaluations, for evaluating uh, uh, language and, and so uh, with AI? So yes, and at the same time, there's Jean Desjardins, which is uh, a uh, computer science teacher who asked the question in the Q&R tab with regards to institutional framework to uh, uh, govern generative AI. So what is the result of that work? We put together a group this year. We know there are CGIPs that have already put together a framework that's already available. Rosemont, uh, Marie-Victorin, uh, Montréal, Vieux Montréal, Vanier. There are some CGIPs that have uh, uh, taken the lead on this. And so for us, what we want to do, as, uh, and I know the Department of Education is putting together a, a committee for uh, a, a higher education. We think we can go faster than them. It's very pretentious of us, but because we have already worked on it, we've been working about uh, talking about AI for a few years now. And so we hope to get there quickly to get to recommendations and a framework because we've heard the federation of uh, students the college students there's no uh, common uh, framework between CEGEPs and it's difficult for the students to have a feeling of equity uh, and consistency so we want to get to a common framework as soon as possible uh, I can't give you any dates or timeline we're starting the work officially but I think things will progress pretty quickly and uh, we hope to accomplish that before the end of the year probably before but I can't uh, uh, talk too much about it yet as we haven't uh, really begun. We've just begun uh, to set things uh, up to uh, drill down, but it, uh, once we do it, we do it right and it's good for 20 years. Yes, because you're right, Marco. Uh, are there other people who have questions uh, with regards to resources that, uh, Nathalie and Marco talked about today and their integration in your classroom activities. Are there any questions uh, about that? So everything seems fine, perfect. So I think uh, we can take a little break. Nathalie and Marco, thank you for your presentation. I invite people to fill out uh, the uh, survey. And we will see you on the 24th of October for the 20-year anniversary of Reptic. See you soon, everybody. Thank you uh, for being with us today.